I am Alistair Douglas. I'm an archaeologist with uh, Preconstruct Archaeology and I'm talking today about the archaeology of Bermondsey Abbey um, from the Saxon period through to the 16th century and the dissolution. Uh, so let's begin. Um, here uh, I've, I've put up on the screen a plan of the area uh, showing the archaeological interventions um, from Grimes in 1959 and then he excavated again in 1962 and 1963. There he is in the green up in the northeast. Um, the site itself were 800 metres south of the Thames. Uh, this is Tower Bridge Road obviously leading to Tower Bridge. Um, Grimes uh, unearths part of the uh, north wall of the Abbey Church and part of the north transept. Uh, Large-scale excavations started again in the 1980s with the Department of Greater London Archaeology um, and it was after those excavations that the, the whole area was scheduled as an ancient monument which you can see in the red um, and Mola carried on with large-scale excavations in the 1990s and they, they were unearthing the eastern range of the, of the abbey and part of the south range. Um, from 1998 onwards, uh, pre-construct archaeology got involved, so we were in there from 1998 to 2008. Uh, these excavations are in blue. These excavations were in, in advance of the development of Bermondsey Square. But we also looked at uh, a plot of land that we call the island here, uh, which was to north of the White Bear Public House here. Uh, we looked at an area to the north of the scheduled ancient monument in Stephen Street. And we also re-excavated part of the Mola Site A um, right here on the eastern side. Bermondsey, the name gives a hint to its early Saxon origins. Um, there is um, in the post-Roman period of the 5th century, um, scattered Saxon settlements began to um, be um, settled from the, the Thames estuary right up to Oxford. Um, showing the importance of the, the Thames as a as a corridor into the country, as a communication route, and it, the Bermondsey sits in nicely as as one of those early fifth century settlements. And sure enough, we did um, unearth some evidence for the early Saxon settlements, including some of these pot sherds here that I put up on the screen. We had a few pits and a few bits of. Uh, uh, remnants of field systems. Uh, now, the first suggestion that there is a, a minster, a Saxon minster at Bermondsey in the Middle Saxon period, um, is is the um, reference in the Liber uh, Niger of Peterborough, that's the Black Book, where Pope Constantine addresses Hedda as Abbot of Bermondsey. And that is the suggestion that, that there is a Saxon minster. It, it seems likely that Bermondsey may have been part of a Middle Anglian federation with a head house at Peterborough and satellites at Brendan on the Hill, Woking and perhaps Who and Bricksworth. However, until actually um, the, the PCA excavations, there was no evidence, no archaeological evidence whatsoever for this minster. However, along the northern frontage, we started to pick up um, fragments of masonry foundations, which were early. They were in the, the lowest part of our, our sequence in, in, in masonry remains. And here's an example here, the east-west running uh, foundation. It's uh, a layer of, of chalk, roughly chalk blocks here with some packed gravel on top. Very fragmentary. Um, but when we look at the, the plan uh, here, we seem to have a series, uh, east-west linear series of perhaps separate buildings. Um, we know that um, 
Saxon minsters weren't usually um, a large, what a single large church, but um, it is the, a, a pattern of small churches on an east-west alignment is something that does fit a Saxon minster. And I put a showing a burial ground to the south here, and I'll come uh, more onto that later. But that is the archaeological uh, my evidence for uh, that this may have be the actual minster part of the minster complex. Um, to support the idea of this Saxon minster, there are a few intriguing um, uh, finds and. Seven Saxon skier coins have been found at Bermondsey Street Square at Stephen Street and from the earlier Bermondsey Abbey excavations. The Skiat coin is a silver coin uh, dating to the Middle Saxon period, so there's clearly somebody about. Here is a, a Saxon hook tag. Um, uh, these finds are these Saxon hook tags are not uncommon on Saxon minster sites. They've been found before. It's a clothing fastening, perhaps for a cloak or something, or possibly a purse. And here, I think, is a very important find. This is a Saxon ceramic mould. It's circular. And what is this a mould for? A circular mount. It would have looked like this. Obviously, this is what we found. This is a, an example. Um, uh, and this circular mount, this kind of circular mount, would have been put on this kind of object. And this is a, relique, a reliquary box. Um, this is just the kind of object that would have been made at a minster site. So really, that, that ceramic mould is extremely important. Um, another very interesting find is this stone lamp. Unfortunately, this was from a, a um, plus, um, so it's, it's not from a context. Um, it's early, it's made of basalt. Um, the basalt itself is, is from either from northeast Scotland or from Norway. And it may, may be, um, be something that was used in the minster itself. Okay, so if I go back to that um, possible graveyard, uh, we didn't actually find any um, inhumations dating to the Middle Saxon period. Well, what we did find was in the 11th century quarry pits on S Stephen Street, we found a considerable quantity of charnel. Uh, representing a minimum of 185 indi individuals, these remains have been carbon dated to between 690 and 882. And what was um, extraordinary about them was the sheer quantity of blunt trauma force to some of these um, skeletons. An example of the skulls here. I have another one here, a whole skull, and you can see the, 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 the blunt um, blow to, to, to the top of the head. So this population was certainly subject to a lot of violence. And it just reminds me of the header stone in Peterborough Cathedral, dated to about 870, that shows uh, car the carved figures of 12 monks, and is supposed to represent those killed in Danish raids, in which some 84 monks, including the abbot he header, were dispatched. Um, it may well be, what I'm suggesting therefore is that the minster, because it disappears, um, it is not there in the late Saxon period, it may have um, um, fallen to, to Viking or Danish depredation um, in the 8th or early 9th century. Well, in the 9th century, probably. Um, we did find some Saxon inhumations, the very the late Saxon. Here's an example of a, a, a woman in her 50s uh, buried in the prone position, um, which is a bit of an unusual but not unknown um, in, in late Saxon cemeteries. Um, 
there are various theories about this. One, it may be that the, the, the person was seen to be deviant in some way. Another one, that perhaps it's penitence. Um, of course, it could just be that somebody's got it the wrong way around. And here is um, an apsidal foundation on the island site. Um, it's curbing. Um, it's in this this, this uh, technique of uh, chalk packed, in this case dirt, chalk packed dirt like the layers of a cake. Um, it appears to date to the late Saxon period, probably 10th century. Uh, here's a wider view of it on the island. You can see on the right the, the, these large um, foundations here. They use mortar, uh, again, and chalk, but a lot of mortar in it. These, these are later medieval foundations of the, of the south transept. What I'm interested in showing you at the moment is this um, curving foundation here. This is just a modern concrete intrusion. Um, and if we look at my plan now, you can see what I think we may have the remains of a church, late Saxon church, some graves to the to the east. And when we put on the, the molar data, you can see some 10th century boundary ditches um, to, 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 to the east. So um, in the late Saxon period, the, the settlement has emerged as a, as a royal manor. As I widen the excavations out on Bermondsey Square, starting in the uh, northeast corner, I started to pick up um, this wall here, south wall to a, to a, a church. Um, that is uh, 11th century. Um, it's a Romanesque church with these pilasters protruding here, these thin pilasters, one here. Um, and it's very interesting. Um, here, here, of course, there are some modern in, 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 in walls that have chopped into it. Um, and as we expand it more, here it is revealed. Um, this is the, the wall that I'm talking about with plaster here, plaster there. And this is the end of that build. That's the end and the entrance to, to the church. So this is a south wall running east-west of a church. The inside of it would have been to the north. And that's its uh, its its um, west end. Um, the Doomsday Book um, says there is a new and beautiful church, and this must be a contender for it. I would argue um, it's faced with carn stone in small ashlar blocks. Um, okay, in. 1089, uh, William Rufus um, gives this land to the monks from Charit sur Loire, um, uh, Cluniac Priory, and they established the Priory of St. Saviour at Bermondsey. Um, the first Cluniac Priory is established in Lewis in around the, 18, the, the 1070s. Um, so this one's a little bit later, a decade later or so. And I think they uh, use that pre-Norman um, church, which is already existing, and that is becomes a priory church while they start to, to construct their monastery. You can see what I think is the cloister garth, or proto-cloister garth, denoted by fragments of ditches here. Um, the charnel pits that you see here um, appear to be removing graves and it may be um, this is where the charnel that middle Saxon charnel appearing on on Stephen Street and so what they may be actually doing is ethnically cleansing the area of the cloister garth um, of of the dead um, there will be no burials inside the the, the garth area uh, throughout the medieval period now when we put this on with the um, molar evidence you can see this nice boundary ditch here and then also note this chapel here so this, this is um, 
I said 11th century and so they also have a contender for the new and beautiful church so there you go you take your pick with that one but uh, um, there's certainly two 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 churches um, uh, standing at a, a, a roughly the same period and they probably are contemporary um, now the, the Cluniac order is um, reaches its its height of popularity if you like in the 11th and 12th centuries it's uh, very influential it has uh, a lot of political power it seems to be taken up um, by the kings and princes across Europe um, and its position here opposite the Tower of London I think is probably quite significant um, it would see it's it's in quite a uh, how can I put it, it, it uh, a location that would have been very obvious as if you approached London up the river I don't think that is um, is a, a coincidence and there's St Saviour's Dock which is a dock built by the monks and of course they would have transported their building material and their carn stone um, via this this dock probably as we expanded the, the area further you can see the church um, this this pre-monastic church was extended um, and completion of it probably did not probably wasn't actually completed this is the uh, the, the priory church and uh, until sometime in the in the, maybe in the uh, 1180s or even 1200 there is a dedication to the church in 1206 and what they've done is they've uh, extended the church to the west and they've added on this massive uh, flanking tower so there will have been another flanking tower to the north outside our area of excavation and you have this massive flanking tower that you see them working on here please note that this is a construction cut for that tower and it is the only location where the the construction cut is wider than the uh, foundations and we'll see the significance of that uh, in the next slide and, and it's also truncating this earlier possibly Middle Saxon uh, foundation here um, the other structures that you see to the to the to the uh, south of the wall alignment are later later medieval or up here the Tudor okay and here's a, a closer look at that uh, those um, foundations to the tower uh, if you look carefully you'll see a face staring back at you uh, this grotesque skull is um, in the foundations there and we look again and there's a close-up of it you can see the tongue the teeth it seems to have had a snout once that has been sheared off there does seem to be some damage to the eyes um, and I would suggest that this is a quite a deliberate placement um, for what purpose I'm not sure but intriguingly there were two human skulls also put inside uh, the tower on the island site um, going back there you, you, you these are the foundations to the south transept with possibly a, a, a cell structure off to, to the east um, massive uh, foundations still built in, in layers of chalk uh, but using um, mortar to bind them together okay in along the north range there were um, several cis tombs um, it was clearly a popular place to be buried because um, some of these tombs intercut uh, one another um, there must be some degree of um, um, status I think to be in these tombs I've got nice in these tombs uh, they with their nice head niches um, they start to come into southern Britain from the 11th century onwards um, and if we look at uh, my plan of the, the 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 abbey or the priory sorry from that period 1150 to 1200 and I've put it with uh, the the 
molar excavations and and with Grimes's excavations this is what you get um, the Priory Church about 98 meters east west with its flanking towers north and south transept um, and we have a west range but Priory's Priors Lodge guest um, range and the molar site with its infirmary its um, refectory the dormitory latrine block uh, and a, a chapel um, presumably for the infirmary as well so that is the the, the priory the, the, the priory uh, in its completed form and just to show you with other cluniac um, churches um, there you go here's lewis slightly bigger obviously not as big as uh, Clooney 3, um, but certainly on a par with Charit Sir Loire. And you can see the influence of these Cluniac um, design churches in the Bermondsey layout. Now, <clears throat> in the 14th century, we get a massive rebuilding, which is shown here with these huge um, buttresses suggesting that the whole height of a church had been um, increased um, and, and you can clearly see it's a, that it's completely different to these earlier foundations here that go with the um, uh, early Ashlos stonework here and the in the island site the, the you're looking at the northeast corner of the cloisters they also have been rebuilt um, in this 14th century and there's a nice relieving arch for the foundations that cross soft ground it's a technique that you start to see coming in from the 13th century onwards in, in ecclesiastical architecture uh, rebuilding of the, 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 the Prior's Lodge in the in the 14th century the Prior now is living in his own apartment um, He's separated now from, from, from the, the, his monks, probably living quite well, I would have thought. A massive rebuilding of the Western Range. This is the solarium um, where they keep all the, the stores of food and wine and so on. Um, that's what these foundations represent. And here we've got a tomb that was empty, but was a, a quite a substantial tomb built against the south wall. And this is a well house also built against the south wall of a church. Um, they would have needed water in the cloisters. It's where they did their washing, both of their clothes, her bedding. It's also where they, they, they shaved their tonsures. And here is a, a plan 1350 to about 1538 with everything put together, what I call the great church. And you can see um, it actually surprisingly seems to work quite well what's important is the cloister has been rebuilt and it's now changed its shape it's gone to a, um, a rectangular and it and, and, and it's it, it's extended normally the cloister sits in the the elbow of the of the um, transept and you can see here it's um, larger than that okay uh, this is what may be the scriptorium and you've got the West Range there. And we've got, uh, we've also put on Grimes' work as well. So it all fits quite nicely, that. Um, here's uh, a massive amount of uh, work stone, not surprisingly, was um, was collected. Most of it was reused um, in, in later contexts, right up until the 19th century, actually. Um, and here we can see some examples of stone reused in wool. Um, here's a nice example of a figurative carving, a female head probably used as a corbel, um, maybe over a doorway or a window. Um, there is some damage to the mouth that might be deliberate when it was perhaps taken down at the time of a dissolution. It was reused actually in, in, a, in, in the, the steps of, of uh, Pope's mansion in the 16th century. Pope was the man that uh, got the land after the dissolution. And the work stone sorted by decade, which nicely um, fits um, my 
phasing quite well, I think. Um, you can see here 1100, 1140 to 1180, build building campaign going on there. 1200, where they may have completed the church, the, the conventional church. The re rebuilding of 1340 to 1350. Um, and then a little bit of rebuilding in the later period. Um, something interesting for you. Um, we found the re uh, some bones from a sparrowhawk and a jeer falcon. Now, sparrowhawks would have been flown by priests, but a jeer falcon is the top uh, bird, if you like, or one of the top birds in the falconry hierarchy, would have only been flown by kings or princes. It's a bird that um, comes from Greenland or northern Norway. Um, so there's an interesting find. Um, perhaps more typical of a monastery is a bone stylus and an oyster shell uh, palette for mixing um, paint. And here's some graffiti on a bit of cornstone showing a knight, great helm, probably 14th century, the shield and a sword. Um, knights, of course, would have been quite frequent visitors, I think, to the monastery passing through on the way to the continent or to, or to Canterbury. And of course, Bermondsey was um, uh, a, a, a pilgrimage itself, center in itself. But when we enhance the graffiti, you can see there's other things going on as well. You've got these eyes that stare back at you that um, may um, have some significance maybe to ward off evil there's some other graffiti down here not quite sure what's going on but you've um, there you go and here is this isn't this amazing is this medieval music is that what we're looking at hasn't been completely confirmed but um extremely exciting if it was And this is my um, reconstruction of Bermondsey Abbey at the time of a conventional church around about 1200, showing the flanking towers and the gatehouse into the inner inner precinct. And I think we're uh, we're about there. Um, so thank you all very much. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Bye bye.